there, everybody. This is Ashley. Thank you so much for joining me today on my first ever video on the Alta New channel. My new series, Lovely Layering with Ashley, will give you some tips and tricks on how to create really gorgeous stamped layered images as well as create dimension for interest on your card. It's also going to give you the confidence that you need to create really beautiful cards very simply. We're going to be focusing on this card today, which has lots of layered stamping as well as layers on the card itself to draw your eye in and give some interest. The products I'll be using today are Sunflower Daisy Stamp and Die Set, the Leaf Cluster Stamp Set, and then the Mega Alphabet H Die. You can use whichever stamps and dies you like. I'm just going to be using these ones for my example today. I'm going to take out the pamphlet here because I really am in love with these trifold pamphlets. They give so much inspiration and I wanted to take a lot of color inspiration from this card here. So I'm going to use some of the inks that I have. I don't have warm sunshine, which is normally the center color, but I'm going to substitute it with maple yellow. I'm also going to be using the orange cream and fire brick colors for my orange smaller daisy. For my layered stamping, I'm going to be using my mini Misty. Using a stamp positioning tool is imperative to getting a perfect layered stamp image at the end. Now you don't always have to use one, but for these larger images like these flowers or this one specific flower in the set, I would highly recommend it. It's really helpful to be able to line it up and then close the door in the stamp positioner to make sure that it doesn't move. So in succession, my colors today are buttercream, maple yellow, caramel toffee, and mocha. And then for that second smaller flower, again, it's orange cream and fire brick. For the base layer stamp or the first layer, I'm going to be using my lightest color and then going up each color in succession and each layer that I go. I know a lot of you are probably saying I already know that, but since this is my first video, I thought I'd go into everything in detail. I would love for you to tell me in the comments what you'd like to see more of or what you don't need to hear so much of, and I would really appreciate that. So now with my second stamp, you can see on each layer, I'm going in and just lining it up. With these stamps, they have the center removed because they are there are separate stamps for the center of the flower, and that actually makes these stamps extremely easy to line up. Anytime you have a flower, a floral image like that that's layered and it doesn't have the center, it's going to be really easy to line up because you can just line up the center on each stamp. They're all going to be the same size because the center isn't getting larger or smaller for the petals itself. So that's always a really good giveaway that it's going to be very simple to layer. So the smaller orange flower only has two layers. So I'm just going to continue on with my larger yellow flower. And you'll see here that it takes me a little while to line this up. I wanted to show you that even when it's simple and even somebody that does a lot of layered stamping like myself, I don't rush my layering. It doesn't just take a second. Sometimes it takes me a minute to just sort of line it up and get it right. Also, you'll see that I transition into an orangey brown color. This is great for a couple reasons. One, it's really hard to just decide that you're gonna go for a really bold color, but also this is what the pamphlet is great for. It'll show you what looks great before you have to dive into it and try it yourself and waste all of that time stamping. Now I'm gonna go in for the center of the flowers and I'm using Rocky Shore, Mocha, and Espresso. These colors were all suggested in the pamphlet, so I figured I should use them. I'm going to go ahead again with my lightest color on the first, or the base layer, the first layer stamp, and then go up again from there. I really love the center of these flowers because they give a lot of dimension, and these flowers end up looking so realistic at the end. That's one of the reasons that I love layered stamping so much is because if you're not a colorist or somebody that is extremely well versed in coloring, you can still make these beautiful images with lots of dimension and highlights and shading without having to uh, be an expert in coloring. So here are the finished images and in just a minute you'll see, or just here, I've done some of the leaves as well. Only one of the leaves in the set is layered and the rest are just one layer. I've gone ahead and cut that 
mega alphabet H die out from craft cardstock. And as you could see in the beginning, we're just going in for a really nice fall theme. I'm going to take the leaf cluster stamp now and set it to the side because I'll be using that to stamp directly onto my card front. As you can see, I'm just placing the die cuts around. I want them to look like they're intertwining in and out of the H. You can use any letter, like I said, you could use any stamp or die, but I like the H because it can stand for happy birthday or hello or somebody's name. So the H and the T, you could use thank you and thankful. Those are two of my go-tos. So I'm just taking all of these die cuts and placing them where I think I may like them. I can always move them around, of course, because they're not adhered right now. But once I get them where I like them, I'm going to use press and seal just to make sure that I can keep all of them in place and I don't lose my spot. Meaning I don't have to take all of these off and sort of remember where I like it or take a picture with my phone. I can have it exactly where I liked it before by using the press and seal. They do have a clear option, but when I went to the store, they only had these polka dots. So I thought, well, that's okay. <laughs> Uh, it's really nice too because once you stamp to do a base layer on your card front like I'm going to do now, you can place it back over just to see if you need some more stamps or uh, some splatter like I'm going to do. So it's nice to be able to hold it over just to be able to see what it will look like once it's done. I'm using my original size Misty here because I want this fairly large leaf cluster stamp to come off of the cardstock and sort of look like it's growing up and off of the cardstock. So to do that, I need a lot more space for the stamp to hang off. I'm stamping this first one in Rocky Shore, which is the lightest brown color that we used earlier for the center of the flowers. And I'm stamping this on the top left hand corner of this card front. I'm going to take that same stamp and rotate my Misty because I'm going to hang it off now from the bottom right hand side. I get questions sometimes on people, uh, people asking if they need the original size Misty or if the mini Misty is okay. And what I always say is it really depends, but it's really nice to have the original size Misty for things like this. This wouldn't work in the mini Misty because you wouldn't have that space to hang off the stamp like that. Using accent stamps like these leaves on the on directly onto the card front really allows for more interest and dimension into the design itself. And I'm feeling like I need something a little bit more. I want it to look a little bit more artsy. And my answer for that is always splatter, paint splatters. So what I'm going to do is put some of the same rocky shore uh, ink right there on the white part of my glass mat. You can use a piece of acetate or a craft mat if you've got it. And I'm just going to add some splatter directly to the card front in that same Rocky Shore color. I know that sometimes people are a little afraid to add the splatter, but I have to tell you, I have never seen a splatter that I didn't like. I would say go for it because honestly, to do those two stamps over without the splatter is going to take no time at all. You're not going to ruin the main image of your card or anything like that. So I am using foam tape now on the back of our main image, which is that H die cut and the flowers and the green leaves. And you'll see that I actually take it off of the press and seal. And I do that because I just couldn't see exactly where I was lining it up. This was especially important because now that the H and the flowers are one cohesive image, they need to be centered on the card front as one image rather than the H being centered and my flowers hanging way off to the left of the cardstock. As you can see, it looks like we have so many different dimensions here. It looks like there's lots of layers when really there's only two, but because we did the intertwining and the stamping directly onto the cardstock, it really looks like there's a lot more going on. I hope you've enjoyed seeing how I created this card. If you have any questions at all, please don't hesitate to ask them in the comments. And I'd love to hear your feedback about the video, what you loved, what you didn't like so much, what you'd love to see more of in the future. I have linked all of the products used today in the description, as well as a link to my blog that has more information about the products used. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you again very soon. Thank you. Bye.